Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do another comparison video. It's gonna be of the Capital One Venture X card against the American Express Platinum card. Now recently on this channel, I actually just did a comparison video. It was comparing the Venture X card against the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And I crowned between those two cards, the Venture X card as being the winner. And the reason for that ends up being because I feel that the Venture X card just ends up being a better version of the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And I think that for most people, the Venture X cards actually end up being a better use case for them to have as compared to the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. But now today what I wanna do is compare the big daddy of travel credit cards being the American Express Platinum card against the Venture X card. Which one do I feel is the better card for most people? And which one do I also feel can actually end up giving you the most value for actually having it? Now the Venture X card from Capital One is the new kid on the block when it comes to luxury travel credit cards. This card has been out for about two years now and ever since it's been out, it's been getting a lot of rave reviews. Now this is actually one of the more recent cards that have added to my wallet. And I've been very happy with getting this card and I've actually been trying to get it for the past two years. I've been rejected from getting it twice, but finally actually ended up getting approved for the card. Now, when you compare it to something like the American Trust Platinum card, this is what is considered the big daddy of luxury travel credit cards. It is a sleek, platinum looking card. And this is the card that pretty much changed the game when it comes to elevating your travel experience. Now I'm gonna dive into both of these cards, but before I do, I wanna pass the question on to the audience. If I could give you $20 billion, would you exchange that to being at the age of 70? Now this question can be a little bit tricky for all different age groups of people because some people who are watching this may end up being 20 and they would go, well, there's no way I'd ever give up 50 years of my life to get $20 billion. But then there's also people like my grandma who watches pretty much all my videos who is in her 80s and she would go, yeah, I would take 20 billion to actually be able to be younger than I currently am now. But I guess really the question ends up being is for $20 billion, how many years would you end up giving up of your life? So if you happen to be 30, would you end up going to being the age of 60 for $20 billion? Or if you happen to be 50, would you end up giving up uh, 10 years of your life to end up getting yourself $20 billion? Let me know in the comment section down below, how many years would you give up of your life to get yourself $20 billion? So I actually have both the Capital One Venture X card and the American Express Platinum card. Now I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of both of these cards. I'm not gonna do a full detailed breakdown because I already have videos on those. So you can always check those out on my channel if you wanna get a full breakdown of either one of these cards. But let's just do a quick rundown of the benefits you will get from these cards. So first, let's look at the Capital One Venture X card. Now this is a very simple earner card that gives you 2X back on all of your purchases. You can get yourself additional bonus points. You end up using Capital One's travel portal where you get yourself 5X back on flights and then you'll get yourself 10X back on hotels and car rentals booked through Capital One's travel portal. The American Express Platinum card gives you 5X back on flights booked directly with the airlines. You can also get yourself 5X back on prepaid hotels. We end up booking through Amex's travel, and you get yourself 1X back on all the purchases. When we look at earning potential between these two cards, the Venture X is gonna win this category. The American Express Platinum card is just not a strong earner card, but it does have other strong points that we'll get to later on in this video. Next, let's compare lounge access. So with the Capital One Venture X card, you're going to get yourself Party Pass lounge access, and then also access to the Capital One lounges. Now, with the Capital One card, you actually get yourself free authorized users connect to this card, and then those authorized users can actually get themselves access to Party Pass lounges as well. So if you are someone who happens to have a larger family, you don't wanna have only, say, two guests, if you happen to have six people with you going into the Party Pass lounge, then what you can actually do is give one of the other people who are inside of your party a Venture X card as an authorized user, and then that authorized user User will also be able to bring two additional guests into the lounge. So this can be a way to not split up the family if you happen to have a larger family that you're traveling with. Now with the American Express Platinum card, what you're gonna get with this is also a party pass membership. You don't get free authorized users, so it will cost you money if you do wanna add an authorized user to your American Express Platinum card. But you do get yourself access to the Centurion Lounge, that does the Sky Club, and then also Plaza Premium. So when it comes to the amount of lounges you can actually access, you can access more lounges with the American Express Platinum card, but when it comes to if you happen to have a larger family, it may end up making more sense to get yourself something like the Venture X card. I feel that the American Express Platinum card wins when it comes to lounge access, just because you have more lounges that you can access. And then also, when you're comparing the Capital One lounges as compared to the Centurion Lounge, 
The Capital One lounges, from what I've seen, I actually haven't been in one yet, actually look really nice. There's just not that many of them out there. Whereas if you end up looking at the Centurion Lounge, while there isn't hundreds of them out there, there are a lot of them in major cities in America. So if you happen to be flying out of LAX, JFK, or Miami, or you happen to be connecting at one of these airports, this is gonna be a great place for you to be able to take advantage of the Centurion Lounge lounge access and be able to just be comfortable just before your departure having a drink or just some free food. Whereas when you end up looking at the Capital One lounges, they currently have three that you can access where I believe are at Dallas, Denver, and Washington, D.C. So while they do have more in the works to be able to try to catch up to the Centurion Lounge, at this moment, they're just not at that place. Okay, so now let's compare the sign-up bonuses between these two cards. With the Capital One Venture X card, you're going to have a public welcome offer that's gonna give you 75,000 Venture miles after you spend $4,000 in the first three months of having this card. Now there is a other welcome offer that you can get if you use someone's referral link where you can get yourself 90,000 venture miles after you end up spending $4,000 in the first three months. Now when you compare that to the American Express Platinum Cards sign-up bonus, the sign-up bonus ranges from being 80,000 to 100,000. I've seen 125 and even 150,000 American Express membership reward points after you spend $8,000 in the first six months of having this card. So while it is more spend, it is over the course of six months as compared to three months. So it actually ends up equaling out to being the same because you look at it being $4,000 over three months as compared to $8,000 over six months. So in this category, when you're looking at welcome offers, the American Trust Platinum card clearly wins because you can get yourself a much higher sign-up bonus with this card. And sign-up bonuses end up being the quickest way to rack up a ton of points fast. Now, if you are interested in either one of these cards, please check out my referral link in the description box. If you decide to use it, it will really help out the channel. And I'll be incredibly thankful for your support. But also, if you happen to be interested in the Venture X card and use my referral link, you will get yourself a higher welcome offer because there is a 90,000 point welcome offer when you use someone's referral link as compared to only 75,000 if you just go to Capital One's website. Next, we're gonna compare annual fees. So the Venture X card has a $395 annual fee, but it has two different credits that are gonna help offset that annual fee, being a $300 credit when you end up booking your first $300 through Capital One's travel portal. And then you also get yourself 10,000 venture miles every anniversary of keeping this card open. So if you actually take advantage of both of those things, you technically are gonna be getting yourself positive $5 from actually having this card. If you're someone who does travel, you probably realize that even if you want to use points and miles for all of your travel, you're probably gonna end up having some places where you're gonna to need to use cash. So being able to take advantage of the travel portal with Capital One for those specific purchases is gonna be a way to help offset the annual fee. Like I know that I'm going to a wedding later on this year that's not connected with any hotel program in the points and miles game. So because of that, I'm either gonna to need to use cash or some type of travel credit to be able to offset this purchase for this wedding that I'm going to, to stay at this hotel. Now, when we compare it to the American Express Platinum card, the Platinum card has a $695 annual fee, which is really, really high. However, it has a slew of different credits and perks to help offset it. I'm not gonna go over all of them. Again, as I said, I have a dedicated video on my channel going over the American Express Platinum card, but I'm just gonna go over some of the highlighted ones that I feel can easily offset the annual fee. The first one's gonna be a $200 Uber credit, and then also you're gonna get yourself a $240 digital entertainment credit, a $200 hotel credit, and a $200 airline incidentals credit. So if you can take advantage of just these four credits connected with the American Express Platinum Card, you get yourself $840 in value, which gives you more positive value than you would be getting with your Capital One Venture X card. So while I do think that it is a lot easier to get yourself positive value with the Capital One Venture X card, you can get yourself way more value with the American Express Platinum Card if you actually end up putting in the work to be able to get this extra value. Because with the Capital One Venture X card, all you'd have to do to get yourself positive value is just make yourself a $300 purchase through Capital One's travel portal with that card, and then it's easily offsets the annual fee. But with the American Express Platinum card, you are gonna have to use the Uber credit, which ends up being broken up into $15 each month, and then they also give you an additional $20 in the month of December. So some people find this annoying because it's a monthly credit you have to use. And then also with the airline incidentals credit, yes, it's supposed to only be for airline incidentals, which for some people can end up being a little bit trickier. But if you end up doing a little bit of research into it, you'll realize that it doesn't have to only be for airline incidentals. And there's many different ways you can actually end up having it go towards airfare. But the credits that are connected with the American Express Platinum card are trickier. So I would say that easier value ends up being with the Capital One Venture X card, but getting yourself more value from the credits that are connected with the card ends up being with the American Express Platinum card. 
Now, one of the things I do want to note about the American Express Platinum card that ends up being a really underrated benefit with the card ends up being the Amex offers. Amex offers is going to be this little section we end up either going onto the app or on their website where you have to check off all of these different offers, but they end up actually having some pretty good ones that could save you a decent amount of money. One of the ones that I always like to talk about on the channel ends up being there was an offer that gave you $80 back after you spent $200 on a JetBlue purchase. So I'm someone who actually likes to fly JetBlue. This was an easy $80 savings for me. It ended up being a 40% return for my purchase, which ends up being incredible in the points and miles game. I also recently saw one that ended up giving you 50% back up to $25 with Uber or Uber Eats. So Amex offers is one really positive thing you end up getting with the American Express Platinum card that you're not gonna see with Capital One. Okay, so next we're gonna compare redeeming points. So both the American Express Platinum card and the Capital One Venture X card, if you redeem for a statement credit, you're gonna end up getting yourself terrible value. With the American Express Platinum card, you get yourself 0.6 cents per point in value. And then with the Venture X card, if it's not travel purchases, it ends up only being a half a cent per point in value. So with either one of these cards, you don't wanna make sure you are redeeming for a statement credit. However, with the Venture X card, if you happen to be doing it on travel purchases, you do end up getting yourself one cent for each point. So that ends up being what I would consider the base level value for your points. So if it's just for statement credit purchases, the Capital One is gonna end up winning in this category. Now we end up looking to redeem for transfer partners, which actually ends up being the way to get yourself the most value for your points. If you compare the different hotel programs between both Capital One and American Express, they both have choice, so that is negated. And then Capital One has Wyndham, and American Express has Marriott and Hilton. So I think that it's pretty safe to say that most people would rather have Hilton and Marriott because they have better programs and also more luxurious hotels that they would rather stay at as compared to Wyndham. So American Express definitely has better hotel transfer partners. Now we end up looking at airline transfer partners. Many of them overlap between these two programs and Capital One actually has some pretty decent ones. I would say that some of the highlighted ones between these two that are different end up being Turkish Miles and Smiles with Capital One and then American Express ends up having a and Now both of their websites are incredibly annoying to use. I would say that Turkish is probably more annoying because I've had to set up a new password I don't know how many times because of the errors that end up popping up every single time I end up using their site. And a and can become incredibly difficult to actually find award availability on their website. But both of these programs, if you actually can get past the hurdles of their annoying websites, end up actually being pretty decent programs. Now, while I am a fan of Turkish Miles and Smiles, I would say that if I actually had to compare Turkish Miles and Smiles to a and I think that a and actually has better sweet spots, even though they might not actually be better for what I might be looking for. I think as a whole, a and actually has better sweet spots for getting yourself a round trip in business class over to Europe for 88,000 a and points. It ends up being a really good deal. Now, Turkish also actually Actually has a business class one way for 45,000 points, which is also a really good deal. But I think if we're going to compare both American Express's airline transfer partners as compared to Capital One's airline transfer partners, American Express is going to win in this category, which means American Express is going to have better transfer partners as a whole. And they also have multiple domestic ones. Now, while I don't usually recommend for people to transfer over their points to the domestic airlines because of the fact that ends up being like an additional tax, and also you don't end up usually getting yourself the best value, at least this actually is an option for people who actually want to take advantage of transferring over to either something like JetBlue or Delta, which isn't even an option you could actually have with Capital One. <sighs> so, who wins out at having the best luxury travel credit card? Well, in my opinion, I believe that the king is still king being the American Express Platinum card. There's just so much potential when it comes to the amount of earnings you can end up getting from having this card that I don't believe you can end up getting with the Capital One Venture X card. I do believe that the Venture X card is still a really good travel credit card and definitely a great one, especially for people who are newer into the game because of the fact you can end up easily offsetting the annual fee just by taking advantage of that travel credit. But if you end up just putting in a little bit of work, the American Express Platinum card can end up giving you so much value. Yes, this card isn't the strongest earner card, so if you actually end up having this card, it's gonna make a lot of sense to have another card to duo with it just for better earning rates. In fact, for myself, with the American Express Platinum card, this card is actually rarely even in my wallet because of the fact that I only ever use this card either for Amex offers or for booking flights directly with the airlines. And actually a lot of the airlines already have my platinum card saved with the website, so I don't even need to take it out for those instances. Now, while this card may lack when it comes to racking up points, where it shines is the earning potential. American Express actually says you can get yourself over $1,500 in value from having the Platinum card. 
I'm not going to say that everyone's going to get that level of value with this card, but you can get yourself a decent amount of value just from having it. I live in Los Angeles and at my home airport of LAX, there's a Centurion Lounge there that I've used about a dozen times this year, which has given me so much value when it comes to free food and free drinks just before my departure. There are so many other benefits that I didn't even go over in this video, such as having like Clear, which allows you to speed past security even faster at the airport. There's also the Saks Fifth Avenue credit, getting yourself Hilton Gold status. There's just so much opportunity with this card that if you actually are gonna put in the work, then it just makes more sense to have yourself the American Express Platinum card over something like the Venture X card. Yes, the higher annual fee is connected with this card being at almost $700, but I do think that if you actually end up just putting in a little bit of work, you can get yourself more than $700 in value from having the Platinum card. And for that reason, that's why the American Express Platinum card is still king daddy of luxury travel credit cards. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below which card you believe is the best luxury travel credit card. Now, if you haven't have any questions about the American Express Platinum card or the Venture X card, also drop that in the comment section down below and I'll do the best I can to answer it. And if you happen to really like this video, then please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video, and have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.